Oh, hey. I was just thinking about pulling the grill out, but uh, I won't let you come over. So I guess we'll have to learn some chemistry thinking about grilling instead of actually doing the grilling. Uh, oh, well. Um, so today we're finishing up, getting the big payoff out of Chapter 4. And the easiest way of thinking about it is actually planning out a grill session. So getting all these reactions and all this stuff, it can be overwhelming. So let's plan out a nice simple grill party. Uh, so when I grill, I, uh, I'm going to have a bunch of people over. But when I have that many people, I have to be a little picky about what I make. And so, just be kind of snobby. I don't do vegan burgers. I don't do Atkins burgers. I don't do dairy-free. I don't do diet burgers. I do yummy, yummy cheeseburgers. That's what I make. That's what I enjoy. And uh, I follow a very simple formula for my yummy yummy cheeseburgers it's actually really easy I take uh, one bun and when I say a bun I include the top and the bottom obviously you know right and uh, two patties alright uh, I need two slices of cheese and all that goes to make one yummy yummy burger now there is a special ingredient that I use. Oh, we can't see the big payoff there. All this goes to make one yummy, yummy cheeseburger. Uh, aren't you glad I taught you to follow the arrow? All right. Uh, so, one yummy, yummy cheeseburger. Uh, the only thing that's missing there um, is the special sauce, the special ingredient. Uh, when you go to the store or you go to a restaurant, they've got all kinds of special sauces. Sometimes it's mayonnaise and mustard mixed together, or maybe it's Thousand Island. They've got sauces you put on the food right before you serve it. They've got sauces you put uh, on the food before you, right as you're cooking it. They've got sauces you marinate the meat in before you ever cook it. This special sauce that I use is, it's secret, but so good. Alright, so what what you do with this special sauce, unlike all the others, is you put this special sauce in you first. You consume the special sauce, and then these cheeseburgers are mm, yummy, 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 yummy cheeseburgers. Uh, I can't tell you what that special sauce is, but I will tell you it comes in packs of 12 and 18 oh and 30 mm. such good sauce though that with my yummy yummy cheeseburgers so when I cook out I provide the special sauce I do all the cooking but I do ask that my people come in over pick up some of the ingredients and so uh, I'll call around divvy it up and I usually like to look for sales so it turns out that cheese is on sale and if you get one pack of cheese and the 32 slices that turns out to be on sale and somebody shows up with five of those I've got five packs of cheese all right, and then uh, the buns. All right, buns come in eight buns equals one pack of buns. All right, um, somebody showed up with eight of those. All right, so I've uh, got uh, eight packs of buns, five packs of cheese, and then the meat special. The meat you can only sometimes you can buy it at Walmart but almost always you buy it at Sam's and what's special about it is 
it's just the nice cheap meat and as my father-in-law likes to say all you really got to do is get it hot enough for the grease to catch on fire and then it'll melt and burn itself um, and it just cooks itself and so you really don't have to do much but let the flame from the grease cook itself when you're ready you slap your cheese on it when you've got it cooked just the way you want it slap the cheese on it it smothers the fire out melts the cheese perfection mm. all right but you buy these and they come in rolls and uh, so one roll of these patties is um, let's see they come in sometimes you get them in 32 or 64 but the 16 patties is on sale it's getting hard to find meat so uh, when you can get the 16 that's pretty good now somebody showed up with four of those I've got four rolls of patties eight packs of buns five packs of cheese so I've got all this and I'm wondering how many yummy yummy cheeseburgers can I make keep in mind I don't do vegan I don't do Atkins uh, so everything has to have one bun two patties two pieces of cheese and I want to know how many yummy yummy cheeseburgers now many of you can already do this math no problem so I'm gonna shrink some of this down and so I'm just go oh, I have this here so I've got let me make sure I'm still on the screen here five packs of cheese and what is that 32 each and I've got eight packs of buns at eight for each buck pack. All right, uh, four rolls of patties. And that is 16. Jot it down, I realize. This small. I'm gonna rewrite my stuff up here. We'll start back again with my yummy yummy cheeseburger. One bun plus two patties plus two cheese goes to one yummy yummy cheeseburger. Now the secret to this is that when you run out of something you're done making yummy yummy cheeseburgers maybe we got extra buns and we can play frisbee maybe we're gonna have a big cheese ball fight and it's, you know it's fun until somebody has to mow next week yeah uh, you know maybe we got a bunch of extra patties left and we'll go fishing that's always good use for patties you can use them as bait it's a nice thing about poor man's fish they'll eat just about anything you throw in the water so uh, when I was a kid we used easy cheese one time and it worked great especially the bacon flavor but if I have five packs of cheese oh man let's set this up a lot like we've been doing in our lab so five packs of cheese each one pack had 32 slices all right and 32 cheese and each one yummy yummy cheeseburger takes two cheese so two cheese is one yummy yummy cheeseburger uh so oh five times 32 Divided by two. Uh oh. Man. Let's see if I got a calculator. Oh, wait, I might be able to do this. I happen to have my shoes off. Should be able to handle this with my shoes off. Hmm. 16 times 5 would be 60. Alright. Assuming I'm right on that. Let's see. That's done 
doesn't sound right. Doesn't sound right at all. That sounds more like 80. Let's see what I A million calculators. Oh well, don't let your kids play with your calculators. All right. Sixteen times five. It should be eighty, not sixty. There we go. Eighty. Whew. Eighty yummy, yummy cheeseburgers from the amount of cheese we have. Uh, let's see. So let's go ahead and do a similar thing for my buns. I've got eight packs of buns. And then each one pack had eight buns. And then one bun gives me one yummy, yummy cheeseburger. Oh, man. A little bit easier math here. 64 yummy, yummy cheeseburgers. Alright. Uh, yep, double check it. <laughs> it's one of those mornings. Uh, let's see. Then I've got four rolls of patty. Each one roll had 16 patties. And Oh, we need two patties. Is one yummy, yummy cheeseburger. Alright, so four times sixteen divided by two. We can only make thirty two yummy, yummy cheeseburgers. So the question is, how many yummy, yummy cheeseburgers can I make? 32. Because we'll run out of patties. We'll still have lots of buns left. Oh man, we'll have 32 buns left. Maybe we just not open four of them and take half of the buns back. Or, uh, we could maybe make some grilled cheese. So, I've got 32 potential uh, yummy yummy cheeseburgers here but the problem is in real life it doesn't always work out this easy and it's unfortunate that those patties are what's going to stop us from making more because those are tend to be what um, what people go after and not actually people the problems go after and the problem turns out to be I've got um, several dogs around us. My neighbor in particular, he's got this little puppy, little black and white puppy, and I, I don't know, it's the cutest dog you ever saw. It's got one kind of floppy ear. It's um, medium hair, so parts of it are long haired and parts are kind of short hair, but it's, you know what? I take it back. It's not the cutest dog you ever saw. It's the ugliest damn dog you ever saw. And that's the problem because you just can't take your eyes off this damn dog. You'll look at it and go, oh, he's so cute. And then you'll turn your head and you'll decide, oh man, he is ugly. That is an ugly dog. Well, I say he's the problem, but really that dog's the distraction. It's my lab partner. He's the problem. He loves patties. And if he gets hold of those, it turns out that if I have some of these sitting on a plate, getting ready to make these yummy, yummy cheeseburgers, then he's going to just lick them all. But he's got some kind of long hair and he's shedding right now. And I don't know what it is about people, but once the dog takes a bite out of that patty, they don't want the rest of the patty. And they can't just brush off the extra dog hair. So my my dog manages to get hold of. He got hold of three patties before we caught him. Three patties are 
gone. All right. Now here's the question: How's that affect my? Uh oh, can't read. Uh, how's that affect my yummy yummy cheeseburgers? Well, instead of being able to make my 32 yummy yummy cheeseburgers, remember it takes two patties to make a yummy yummy cheeseburger. We just lost the equivalent of two yummy yummy cheeseburgers. So we can really make teacher I want to know how good a job I did I don't basically base up the flavor because hey these are yummy yummy cheeseburgers special sauce make sure everybody has a good time everybody enjoys these burgers but hey how many did I make out of what percentage did I make out of these all right and so that's not too bad that's 30 out of how many we could have made which was 32 and then just times 100, right? And then so uh, 30 divided by 32. Oh man, 93.7. That's a 94%. Man. Well, they have that. All right. So 94%. Hey, hot dog. Uh, success, right? And then. Maybe I got some buns to take back. Ooh, I could just save some buns and then next time I'd have a cookout next day. I'll just have somebody bring over some more patties. Or we'll just send somebody to the store. Oh man. We always end up going to the store for more special sauce anyway. It just I don't know. It's one of those things you never have enough. Alright, so all of this stuff is not that difficult. You plan a cookout, you've done this kind of stuff before. All right. um, it's just in chemistry, we have fancy name for all of this. Fancy name for all of this, all right? Uh, so the fancy name for this is stoichiometry. Oh man, that's a nasty word. Let's write that over here. Stoichiometry. Whoa, no space. Good thing it's a terrible looking word. Stoichiometry. Let's find some more space here. Stoichiometry. Oh, it won't fit this way either. There's no way. Oh, and it's there. Oh, man. Alright, so stoichiometry really is planning out how much you could make based on what you started with. And there's a couple of different names here. First thing I want to be careful about is the difference between reactants and reagents. And reactants and reagents are pretty much the same thing. A reactant's what you see in the equation. A reagent is what you see in the bottle. And many times in lab you don't use the exact reactant either because of safety concerns or because of cost uh, or sometimes the reactant that uh, is called for isn't very stable and so you want to use a reagent to make that all right and so some of these terms you'll hear me call reactants sometimes I'll slip and call them reagents because these calculations are very common to do in lab and every one of our labs has had these calculations as part of uh, the setup for it. So when we say use five grams of uh, unknown and then we tell you how much water to add and how much uh, how long to heat it, we've done calculation these very same calculations to predict how much you'll need of everything. All right. Uh, so what did we run out of? We were making yummy yummy cheeseburgers. We ran out of patties. And so the patties this is our limiting reagent. We ran out of patties. It limits what we're going to be able to make. All right. The other things we have extra of. These are excess reagents. Oh, this board's getting full. Man, oh man. All right, so. Excess reagents are what you have extra of. Excess. 
limiting reagents limit the reaction. Nice and easy. All right. Uh, we said we could have made 32 yummy, yummy cheeseburgers. Fancy name for that. This is our theoretical yield. Theoretical yield. Yield is to make. All right. So theoretical yield. Uh, it's how much we can make according to the math. How much we make according to the math. Now we had some puppy trouble. All right. In lab, you constantly run into trouble. You spilt a little bit, or uh, when you transferred some, some was stuck on the inside of the glass. Especially with liquids, that happens a lot. Uh, some reactions just don't work all the way. Most reactions don't actually work all the way. Uh, if you want to make a lot of money, you can go into a whole field just making reactions that are involved in uh, uh, making medicines more efficient. A couple of percentage points uh, in the yield is huge money for the company. Man. All right. Now, so we really made fancy words for all of that. This is the actual yield. Actual actual yield all right uh, matter of fact where we did this that was our percent yield our percent yield so let's get rid of some space here we calculated percent yield by saying how much we could have made how much we did make over how much we could have so percent yield will be our actual divided by the theoretical and then times 100. Anything with percent in A has times 100. All right. So percent yield, stoichiometry, oh man, scary sounded words. But it's not that bad. We're just making some cheeseburgers, right? Uh, so it's the same kind of math you would do you were planning out to make some cheeseburgers. Hang on. I swear I have another guy there. Full of errors. I told you my kids played with them. Alright, so. We're getting ready then to practice some of our chapter four. So, all over the place today. Uh, you probably hear some alarms going off. My kids got to get up and get ready for their school. So we'll be we'll be fast here. All right. Uh, so I've got to set up my roadmap. This is this roadmap. It's found also in your lab book. It's found in the PowerPoint. All right. Uh, so this is the key to chapter four. So density to mass that came out of chapter one. Uh, this was our new things that we used uh, at the beginning of chapter four. And then all of our equations and our reactions are all mostly about finding this mole to mole relationship to cross this bridge. And the key to reading this is that you cannot cross this any place except the bridge. So don't cross any place except the bridge. All right. Uh, so I'm going to keep that down over there. I've got my paper I'll be referring to from time to time. Uh, but let's get some practice. Uh, so, I'm going to start with just practicing some out of the lab first. Some people have asked me about this one in particular out of lab. 14.87 uh, grams of C12H22O11. Alright, and oh, let's take this to atoms of C. Now, we want to learn how to break these problems apart. First thing I'm going to notice 
is things after the units here are not the same. And if they're not the same, that means I'm going to cross my scary river. I'm going to go from moles to moles at some point. So I'm going to make this my A, and then the C, the carbon here, is actually B. All right. So I'm going from mass of A, and I'll be going to atoms of B. So I'm going to cross here. Now, if I'm reading this by looking at the conversions, then I have one, two, three steps. Alternatively, I can read it by destinations. And I have starting with the mass, then I'll go to moles, then I'll go to moles of the other thing, and then down to the uh, atoms. Alright, so just following those directions, the destinations will be across the top. In other words, I'll have my grams of C12H22O11. That needs to go away. You see, 12H22O11. I want that on the bottom. And I'm going to go to moles of C12H22O11. Just because that was my next location. The next location needs to be moles of B. Or in this case, it's carbon. Uh, and so I need this moles C12H22O11 on the bottom so it'll cancel out. And then moles of C needs to cancel out. And I want atoms of C. And that's the key. You do the units first. Alright. Any place except my mole to mole relationship, it's a 1 for the moles. I'm going to go ahead and add all those in. This mole to mole relationship depends on if we're talking about part of the whole or if we're looking at a reaction. They didn't tell me a reaction here. We're actually looking at part of the whole. All right. So I'll use the subscripts to find that relationship. So any place else that has a mole. So this moles over grams, that's molar mass. That'll be a 1 with the mole. Atoms and moles, that's going to use Avogadro's number, but that's a 1 with the moles. All right. I started with 14.87 grams. Now I'm going to change colors and show where I get everything. All right, The C12H22O11, that's the molar mass. To get that, I'm going to go to my periodic table. And so I'm going to do that math real quick down here. 12 times 12.01 plus 22 times 1.008 plus 11 times 16.00. Uh, if I remember the lab right, it's 342.296. All right, double check my math on that. I believe it's right. I could type it in. Hey, we got got a calculator. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I can't see it on there. Uh, so, apologize for that. Uh, we got to, like, hold it up. There we go. So, I'll type it in. 12 times 12.01 plus 22 times 1.08 plus 11 times 16. Alright. Three forty-two point two nine six. So you can see, I just typed it in exactly as it's written. No problem. All right, that's the molar mass. I really want you to get in your head. Anytime it's moles over grams or grams over moles, you get the molar mass off the periodic table. All right. The next one I'm going to worry about is atoms of C over moles of C. That's Avogadro's number. Now I've got to memorize it. So I'm going to learn it by cadence. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. All right. And so uh, I'll have Avogadro's number. It goes with the atoms, never with the moles. All that really leaves me then is this mole to mole relationship. For each one mole of C12H22O11, I have 
12 moles of carbon. So we're set up now. All we've really got to do is type this in. Now a couple of mistakes people have been making. When they type in Avogadro's number, they keep using that multiplication sign or they use a 10. And I see that all the time. So when I type this in, I want it to be 14.87. And I can do divided by 342.296. You could just straight multiply it at that point. Times 12 times 6.02. I'm going to hit second EE. -E, so I get the E. And I'll get... 23. Alright. Uh, you could have done 14.87 times 12 times 6.02 E23 divided by 342.296. Order did not really matter. You can either multiply all the way across the top or multiply all the way across the bottom. Uh, that's my wife taking my lab partner out. He's ready to go. Uh, so let's go ahead and 14.87 times, times 6.02 second EE e, 23 and then divided by 342.296 and I got 3.138 we had four safe fix when I started so 3.138 times 10 to the 23rd. Now if you get some times 10 to the 40 something, probably you've messed up the stuff that's on the bottom, especially Avogadro's number on the bottom. So let's see if I can hold this up so that you can get a quick look at how I typed it in. So 6.02, all right, e to the 23rd. You really don't want it don't want to put that multiplication sign or the time the 10 that's all built into this e all right so my units on this would be atoms of c okay. uh so not too bad not too bad so this one just straight conversions all right but we can use a similar idea. Let's do something a little different. Instead of going from uh, part of the whole, let's go to a completely different compound. So let's cross this river with a different compound. So here's what I'm going to do. I've got 35 grams of C8H18. And I want to burn it. And so I'm going to burn it. Burn it. I want to know how many grams. Um, yeah, how many grams of CO2 are produced? How many grams of CO2 are produced? And why might I want to focus? There it is. Why might I want to know this? Uh, man, C8, H18, that happens to be octane, which is one of our main fuels in gasoline. Matter of fact, it's when you go buy gasoline, it's what determines how much you pay, is what the octane rating is. All right, so. I'm going to need to go C8 H18. That's, you'll notice, one thing. And then I have grams of CO2. Matter of fact, I got two different types of grams here. So, I've got grams of octane and grams of CO2. That means I need to cross the river. And to cross this river, I need to go moles to moles and I'll use a balanced chemical equation. So first step to here then, if you're not sure if it's a word problem like this and you're really not sure, here's how I want to teach you to do word problems. Make a list. What's given? 
and what do they want. And so let's just make a list. Everything that's given. 35 grams of C8H18. Uh, they also gave me this word burn. That helps. And what is it they want? Grams of CO2. And so when we see that these two are different, that's immediately a sign we've got to cross our scary river. So we need an equation that we can have for this burn. So burn happens to be combustion. So CaH18 is my fuel. Don't forget you've got to memorize combustion. So it's plus O2. It goes to CO2 plus H2O. Now this is only really helpful if it's balanced. I'll need the coefficients from this later when I cross my scary river. Just say hi, though. Just like Okay, hang on. What do you need? I need my shoes. You don't need the damn shoes. I do, I warm my... I can't use yours. I got a hotel. Oh, okay. Alright, so gonna burn some octane. Let's go ahead and balance it. Uh, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, one, two, three, eight, eighteen, two. So sometimes this will be given to you balanced. Anytime I see an equation, I assume it's not balanced. Even if I see some numbers, double check it. So I'm going to put an eight here. Give me eight carbons. I'm going to put a nine over here to get nine hydrogens. Uh, so that will be 8, 9 times 2 would be 18 hydrogen, sorry. Uh, and then my math on the oxygen is now 8 times 2 plus 9 times 1. Because it's in oxygen, it's in CO2, and in water. So 16 plus 9 is 5. So I need a number over here, which will be 25 halves. So when I multiply it by this 2, I get 25. Now you can't end with a fraction, so my ratio, if I multiply them all by 2, it'll be 2 to 25 to 16 to 18. Multiply them each by 2 so that I get all whole numbers. Alright, so I'm going to clear the board here. Rewrite everything nice and small. All right. All right, so 35 grams, and we're doing C8H18 plus O2 plus two CO2 plus H2O. And this was 18, and this was 16, this was 25, and this was 2. Whoa, that's a lot of CO2 being focus. Camera. I swapped the cameras around. This one's supposed to be better if I was like, we'll see. Uh, so, man, that's a lot of CO2 being formed. Wow. A little bit of gas makes a lot of CO2. Mm. Climate change. That's the reason. Right there. Alright, so let's then take our 35 grams of C8 H18 and plan things out starting from there. I'm going to start. We're at mass of A. I want to go to moles of A. So I know I want moles C8 H18 here and grams of C8 H18 on the bottom. So it cancels out. Then I want moles C8 H18 on the bottom and we're going to cross our scary river so I'll have moles and we're asking about CO2 then I wanted to go from moles of CO2 and it asked me to go to grams of CO2 now my scary river picture tells me I'm going to use the molar mass on these 
but you can also do it by looking at the units. And so the units help guide us through this. So I need the molar mass. It's a one with all the moles that's not mole to mole. So the molar mass here, going back to this C8, that'll be 8 times 12.01 plus 18 times 1.008. And we get to type all that in. 8 times 12.01 plus 18 times 1.008. 114.224. 114.224. That's our molar mass. All that just to get that what's on the bottom. I need the molar mass of CO2 over here. So 12.01 plus 2 times 16.00. I'm getting these numbers right off the periodic table. Uh, that'll be 44.01. 32 plus 2. Right. Now I just need this moles of CO2 to moles of CH18. 18. This part we're going to get right off the bouncy equation. So if it's part of a whole, if we're using the chemical formula, we use the subscripts. If we're using, notice this is not, CO2 is not part of the C8 H18. It's related through this equation. So we're going to use the coefficient. So the number in front of CO2 is 16. And the number in front of C8 H18 is 2. And so now we can set up this math and 35 times 16 times 44.01, <coughs> excuse me, divided by, don't forget if you're doing this multiplying across top, multiplying across bottom, you're going to need parentheses, 114.224 times 2. A lot of people forget the parentheses on the bottom. Any math on the bottom, you need parentheses. 35 times 16 times 44.01 divided by, open parentheses, 114.224 times 2. Enter. So there's where I typed it in. There we go. 107.88. We started with two sig figs, I'll call it 110, no decimal place, grams of CO2. Alright, so a little bit more involved, you can see how things get put together. Oh man, this is why students complain when we have stuff like 65 questions on the final and then students go, oh no, that's too many. Oh man, Dr. J, it's too hard. And I tell them, well, if I had my way, I'd have one question. But it'd be a lot like this. It would involve everything we learned. So, ugh, I don't know. Um, it's a good thing I don't get my way every time. Alright, so we want to try another one. Uh, let's do 100 grams. grams of CAH2 and I want to know how many molecules of hydrogen gas of hydrogen gas is produced. So this would be a word problem. Uh, if 100 grams of CAH2 reacts in the following reaction, how many molecules of hydrogen gas are produced? I'm not gonna write all that out, but it happens to be several problems like this. But they will always give you the formula or the equation. So if they are giving me this equation, CaH2 plus, and they happen to already give it to me balanced, which is convenient. CaOH2 plus 2H2. Now this is my gas, this one happens to be 
aqueous, this is liquid, and this is a solid. But that doesn't actually matter. When they said hydrogen gas, they're actually telling me it's diatomic. Alright? So hydrogen gas is one of, one of our diatomic elements, uh, always H2. So where we're going, we've got one thing going to something different. So the H2 we're talking about is not part of the CaH2. Alright, it's just coincidence that they both have a 2. We're doing two different things. We're taking a reactant and going to a product. Okay, so we're going from grams of one thing to molecules of another. So grams of one thing to molecules of another. I'm going to start up here in grams A and I'm going to go to molecules down here of the other. All right, and so not any more complicated than what we've been doing. Uh, start 100. Uh, should put a decimal so we have sig fig CAH2. I need these grams to go away. CAH2. That'll get me to one mole of CAH2. Notice how important it is that I write what I'm talking about behind the units. If I just put moles, I would get confused on which moles I'm canceling out. And we're going to cross over here to moles of H2. And then they asked me to go to molecules. So each one mole of H2 has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. No good abbreviations to that of H2. Alright, so 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. It could have been atoms over there. Notice it's it just depends on what we're talking about. So H2, it's a molecule, even though it's just one element. Alright. Uh, I need a number here and numbers here. I added the ones as I went. So CAH2, I'll have to look up that. Let me find a periodic table. Calcium is 40.08. All I'm doing is looking it up on my trusty period. So 40.08 plus 2 times 1.008. Now I'm fine with doing this on multiple choice question. I might leave off some of this and just get close. Close enough, right? Uh, so we'll call that 42. We're going to get close enough. Close enough for multiple choice. 42. And then over here, I've got moles of H2 to moles of CaH2. Well, I'm going to take that right off. So you see that. Green. This two just comes right here. I get two moles of CaH2 for each one mole of CaH2. Let me double check that it's balanced. Uh, one calcium on each side. I've got six hydrogens there. There's two and four. There's six. Two oxygens. Two oxygen. It's balanced. All right. Uh, so we're going to type this in. Let's type it in just like what we did before. 100 times 2 times 6.02. 100 times 2 times 6.02 e to the 23rd divided by 42. Okay. Um, I'm going to cheat and type in 200. 6.02 second e is 23rd divided by 42. I got 2 point, you know, repeating here, 2.87. Looks complicated, looks difficult. Great problems to practice. I recommend practice the long ones because some of the questions are not this difficult. Some of the questions I'll ask you to balance the equation. Some of them I might even just say, What is the formula for hydrogen gas? 
I might just ask, what is the molar mass of CaH2? Find the molar mass. Alright, I might just say, what is Avogadro's number? I'm pretty likely to say, what is Avogadro's number? You know what? On my test, I don't know if I can get away with that. Man. Oh well. I'll just assume that you can know it or you can look it up real fast. Alright. Uh, so, one more. Let's do a more complicated one. More complicated, I better use my cheat sheet here. Oh, my cheat sheet. Boom. Uh, so, I've got four moles. Fe3O4 solid and it reacts with oxygen gas and that makes six moles of Fe2O3 solid. This is a fun one to try and balance because oxygen is everywhere. Alright, uh, me what I did is I key up on the iron there's two pecks of two, pecks of three. That means I'm gonna. I said, hey, I want six inch. That's so I put a three and a two. But then I needed half a mole of oxygen. So multiply everything by two. This one was already balanced for us. Yeah, no problem. Let's use it. So if I have four grams of Fe3O4, and it reacts with. Zero point five zero grams of O two. I want to know a what is the limiting reagent now the book likes to ask this I never do it's part of the problem um, why would I walk you through the steps? It's just one of the steps. Book likes to walk you through it. So we'll, we'll keep that question in there. Uh, but here's the way, main question I would ask. I'd say, how many, uh, let's do grams of Fe2O3 are produced? Or maybe they'd say, can be produced. All right, what they're asking for here is a theoretical yield. All right, big, long-looking word problem. Sometimes they'll just mix it in. Um, it's fairly well broken down. Let's kind of highlight a couple of things. We get our equation. But first thing, they gave me grams Fe3O4. But they also gave me grams of O2. In the previous problems, they only gave me one. Now they've given me two. That's a clear indication that we're going to have to do some stoichiometry and find the limiting reagent. Now this particular problem they asked about, it sounds like it's way more difficult. It's really not any worse, but it is a little bit longer. We're going to do two problems and then pick the answer that's based off the limiting reagent. Keep in mind, limiting reagents, what you run out of. What I do is I find my answers, and the correct answer is whichever one is smallest. So let's do these two conversions. I'm going to start with my 4.00 grams of Fe3O4, and it wants me to go to grams. All of these, we're trying to get grams Fe2O3, so I'm going to go there. Uh, but you cannot cross grams to grams. I have to go grams to moles. So I need to go to moles of Fe3O4. Fe3O4. And then I can go over to moles of Fe2O3. Now, one mole. Fe2O3 has so many grams of Fe2O3. On the bottom, I'm going to do 0 0.50 grams of O2. 
folks here. I'm gonna go uh, so many grams of O2 is one mole of O2. So many moles of O2 will be moles of Fe2O3. And then for each one mole of Fe2O3, we'll have so many grams Fe2. Three. Ooh, that's complicated. All right. So let's analyze here. I've got grams to moles. Put a one with that. No problem. Uh, grams to moles. That's molar mass. So let's find the molar mass. Fe three O four. So pull out my periodic table. Fe is fifty six. No, fifty five point eight five. There's three of these, so three times 55.85 plus uh, four times 16. And 231.55, that is this number, 231.55. Uh, then I've got my grams, my mole to mole, uh oh. Well, I'm gonna go back up to my balanced equation, four moles was in front of the Fe three O four, so four goes down there. Fe two O three had a six in front of it. That six goes with that. That simple. Uh, then I've got Fe two O three. Um, now I'm gonna scroll up and just modify what I had. Since I had the fifty five point eight five already in, I now have two of those and three oxygens 159.7 159.7 now that's going to be the same thing on this bottom problem 159.7 all right grams of o2 happens to be 32. uh-oh moles of o2 that's one fe2 o3 is six so here here we go uh let's do green for the top one, so four times six times one fifty nine point seven divided by I'm gonna open parentheses because I got math on the bottom two thirty one point five five times four and I got four point one four grams Fe two O three. Uh, let's see, we need a color for the bottom. What do I got? Uh, red would be fine. Uh, so 0.5 times 6 times 159.7 divided by 32 is 14.97 grams of Fe. Now, I'm not worried about sig figs yet. Uh, I could. It's not any more difficult for three sig figs and two sig figs. So, we'd have to do some rounding. Uh, so, which one is lower? Well, we only had enough Fe304 to make four grams of Fe203. We had plenty of oxygen. Alright, so. Which one did we run out of? We ran out of Fe three O four. It's my limiting reagent. So when they ask what is the limiting reagent, it's not Fe two O three. It's the one we ran out of. All right. Now how much can I make? Four point one four. That's what we can. Make. All right. So there's my answer to that. Now the book sometimes, most of the time, tries to warn you and says, hey, you don't have to do any of this math. And the way they do that, they'll say, instead of saying, telling 0. 0.5 grams, they say excess O2. And so you'll see a lot of things where they say, this reacts with excess oxygen. This reacts with excess water. This reacts... And we do things in excess so that 
we know what the limiting reagent is. So it's only really one thing. We do this quite often in the lab. We choose the limiting reagent to be the expensive one. We want to use all of it. Or sometimes we want the limiting reagent to be what is in the solid form. For instance, uh, the lab that we do on molar relationships, we want to remove all the solid and have all the excess reagent still be in solution. And so that way it just gets washed away. All right. So chapter four, whole lot of problems. Uh, practice these. All right. Um, if you get to the end of the chapter and you done the odd numbers and you keep getting those right then you're in great shape if you're struggling then I've had several of you send me screenshots or just take a snap a picture of your notebook paper whatever you need to do email it to me and I'll look at it and usually be able to get you a pretty quick response uh, I'll be a little bit slow today get to sleep um, so my wife's uh, gone nocturnal and so I'm slowly transitioning that way, but I do have a couple of meetings tomorrow, I guess. i got to stay up for So, anyway, we'll uh, have a busy weekend. I'm going to start Chapter 5 early next week. But we've still got a couple of labs left on Chapter 4. I'll probably not open that test up till the middle of the next week. I'll open it up. I'll give you probably uh, at least a week, week and a half on it, probably. Uh, so, quite some time uh, to... Uh, to kind of get ready for it um, and then a big window to take it so just whenever you're feeling like you're ready it'll be chapters three and four all right um, really just focus on the naming and then chapter four so practice these problems practice some of the naming some of these problems they can include the naming so it could be a word problem when I tell you sodium hydroxide reacts with uh, potassium nitrate and it forms uh, you know and then I'll ask you what it forms well, sometimes you have to finish out the equation we just tell you which two reactants react you have to figure out what type of reaction it will be and finish those out so uh, we uh, we ask these and we want you to practice them Practice them so much so that when we ask you a question, you feel like you've answered a bunch of them before. And that it's not anything new, it's just more of what you practiced. Alright, have a great weekend. Uh, I'll get a new labs uh, up. Um, in fact, uh, I think we've got a guest video for the, the next lab, so uh, that'll be exciting. So. Uh, sorry for the interruptions. We had a few of them today, but you know, hey, uh, everybody's got that going on. So uh, take care.